Switch. There we go. Start recording. So, what we're going dictionaries and structuring data. So, a dictionary is similar to a list where it's a collection of information, but you have a key value pair. So, instead of just having a list equals, and here is uh, element, let's do element one, element two, a uh, couple numbers. All right, that's just a list of information. It's just attributes, it's just elements, it's just whatever. With the dictionary, you can actually have a key and a value. So you remember how we would say names is, and we would have, and I'm just gonna do letters, A, Right, so we have Adam, David, Fiona, and Terry. And we're gonna go ages, and it's 18, 19, 20, 21. So now, so I know names bracket zero is A, so Adam, and I do ages bracket zero, Adam is 18, okay? With a dictionary, I can combine these two into one one um, one data one one collection of data. So I can do students equals, and instead of brackets, we're going to do curly brackets, and it's Adam. I'm actually going to type these out, and then Adam is 18, and then we had what was it, David, and David is 19. And then we have Fiona, and Fiona is 20. And then we had Terry, and Terry is 21. So now I've linked these two together. I have a key value pair, and notice the key value pair is separated from other key value pairs by this comma, but the key and the value have a little colon in between them. You can it's called a dictionary because you have a key atom and a value 18. Just like in a dictionary you have a key apple and a value which is the definition. So it's a key value. They don't say definition because one definition is used for variables or functions and two it can be another list, it could be another dictionary. Um, you could have you could do a bunch of different things. So, and I'm gonna show you how you have a dictionary within a dictionary and why that would make sense, um, but in just a minute. So, now if I want to display 18, what I have to do is I have to type students bracket, I think it's a bracket, Adam. And that gives me the value, I cannot do the, ver the reverse. I can't do 18 and get Adam, right? I get a key error. So that is something that you could do with another try and accept and say, hey, try input, right? Get this input and then display key error or display the value. If we get a key error, ask them for it again, as opposed to saying if name in dictionary, which you can do. Now, since I've bought this book, um, uh, an update change. Okay, so it used to be dictionaries were stored randomly. So this would have been Fiona, Fiona 20, David 19, Terry, and Adam, even though I typed it in up here, Adam, David, Fiona, Terry. But they've since updated that and now it's ordered in the same order that you create it. So just an FYI, if you see something online, dictionaries are no longer randomly structured, they're ordered just like the way you created them. Okay? Um, Does it really matter though? Mm, yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Does it have an index though? There are no indexes, they're all keys. So, Again, students, you would, the index, but it's a key, would be 
would be the name. So now let's say I want to add Josh. So students, Josh equals, Josh, how old are you? Uh, 17. You are 71. Nice. And then it just adds it to the end here. So you don't have to do append or anything. You just say the name of the dictionary, the val or the key that it needs to be, and the value. And, just instantly adds. and it just adds it to the end. What if you put one that was already in there? Would it add one or would it just reset the value? Like adding another like David? Or like would it add another Josh or would it change the value of Josh if you put like 73? Would it change it to 73? Um find out what do you guys think do you think it rewrites what Josh is or do you think it puts Josh in again rewrites it rewrites Micah where's, where's my yeah, you're... rewrites uh, I asked a question that's why oh oops it rewrites it So then what if you wanted two things that were the same name? Or is that not possible? Like it just like... That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I can't remember. Are they still called indexes or uh, in a dictionary or keys? They're keys, keys and values. Keys and values, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see, can I? Do they go like zero, one, two, or just the first key, the second key, the third key? Is there a number each of the keys or no? No. Okay. No. The get method set default. Okay. Um, I can't remember if you can have multiple ones. I think you can, but I, again, I can't remember. Um, questions so far. Okay. Um. So, dictionaries versus lists. Lists are ordered, dictionaries are ordered, so we're not really gonna go over that because this is all saying that they're not because um, they haven't been at updated. Now, what if I wanted just to display the names of everyone in the list or in the dictionary? We can use a loop and we can display just the names, just the items, just the values, or both. So for name in students dot keys print name. <laughs> so again, just displaying the people in the name or in the list. I can do the same thing with ages. Yep, values. And if I want to print them both, you can do four. Now remember how I was telling you guys the other day with for loops, the only new thing you're going to learn about for loops is you can have multiple values for x, y, z in os.walk. You can use that here too. So we can put four names ages in students dot items oops print names hey is ages years old and you can print both Make sense? Questions on that? Print value, yep. That's weird.
Um, some other things. So let's say I need a list of just the names in the class for whatever reason. I just need the. I just need. I have a dictionary of everything, but all I need is a list of all of their names. You can do a list of students dot keys. And that's only the output. It hasn't created like a whole new list. That's just um, a one-handed operation. If I make it. Well, yeah. X equals then now you have. Now X is saved as a value, yeah, or as a list. And again, I can do the same thing with values. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of the list is going to look like? It's going to be the entire thing. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a list of what? The values and the keys. As? Separate. So you think it's going to be Adam, comma, age, comma? Probably. A list inside a list. Or close. Tuples. Not Tuples inside of a list. But now I can do X. Okay. And then what if I just wanted to print David? One zero. Oops, hang on. So x one is this tuple, but since it's a tuple, the tuple itself has its own index, and so then to get what's the index of this zero. So, question so far. Any questions on what a dictionary is, how key values are connected, indexes, anything like that? Okay. So we can check what's going to happen. True, false, no, none, I don't know. True. Mm -hmm. So we can do if David in students print David is there we can do what if we did what do you guys think would happen if I put not right here Tricky. Hmm? I don't know what else would happen. Yeah, I don't know either. That was just an idea. I want to see what would happen. He's just making David false. And so. so, questions on that? So, there's two different things you can do with this if thing in dictionary. You can code around the, t the key error. With the try and accept, you can code through it. Does that make sense? Because I could write, I need, to, I need this list or dictionary. User is input. And we could do if user in students print that student is in the phone book or whatever. Phone book is a very good use for dictionaries. Is in the phone book. Here is the number. Print students bracket user else print that student isn't in the phone book. It's 
let's do all right so if we enter David David's in the phone book that student isn't in the phone book so we can do it this way or we could do we could try print that copy I have no idea if this is gonna work except key error and then we could add Actually, I don't think we need anything else. And then finally, we can always print program dominated. So you get the same. Uh oh, hang on. Hey, I'm confusing myself. Oh, you would have to switch these up. There is the number. So notice that it doesn't do everything in this list. I'm sorry, it doesn't execute both lines of code in this indented in this statement block in this little chunk as soon as it hits an error it jumps down so you want to try to keep the amount of code in your try section as few as lines as possible because like I said beforehand it was still printing that student is in the phone book here's the number that student isn't in the phone book because we had this line before the line that actually caused the error. Make sense? Um, the get method. <laughs> this is nice. So, this command actually has a built in fallback. So, all we're going to do is print students dot get David or actually we're going to type in user comma that person doesn't exist what do you guys think this is Your fallback. Yeah. it's the fallback wait I used that word didn't I yeah you did David gives us 19 that person doesn't exist. So you don't even necessarily have to code all of this. You can just use the get method. I am bringing string up again. Bless you. So how so if this is the output right here, David and 19, well you could just put user comma age is please input a name. David David age is 19 or what do you think is gonna happen if I just put ASDF? ASDF age is that person does not exist. So it really depends on how you want to code whether or not you should use if in a try and accept or the get method. If you just want to get 
the hang on, what does the book say real quick? Um, then you should add a apostrophe s to the You could add what? You could add a apostrophe s to use it. No. What's in the dictionary? So that David Age is 1901. David have to look at Yeah, I know, I was too lazy to do that. Question so far. Can you go back to it? So typically get just should just return the value and that's all you should really use it for. You know, whose phone number are you looking for? Oh. David's. Here's the number, otherwise he doesn't exist. So let's I'll do let's do it that way. So David's phone number is 123 Hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Please input a name. Let's do who's no. Whose number do we need? We need David's. That's his number. If he's not in there, that person doesn't exist. So this is more when you should use it as opposed to saying key in dictionary is value. And not is is an equal, but like the string. So like Micah is 10 or Micah is, I don't know, brunette or whatever. Make sense? So this should just be, I'm receiving the just the value and I don't need the user. I don't need the key because they've already provided it. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Now this set default one may be a little confusing. Basically, what it does is if, hang on, you'll often have to set a value. Oh, if it's not, if this key is not in there, make it this. So if we were to do that, let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. So we're just going to continue with students. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And if, let's do user is um, Josh, because I don't think Josh is in there. So you do if user not in students, students bracket user, you are 71, right? Josh? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's not in there, we need to create it. All right. We don't necessarily want to have to write this two lines of code every single time. Granted, it's only two, but for every time you type something, you increase the chances that you'll mistype something. So what we do is So if, I, if we run this, we get students up top first without Josh. And then since Josh doesn't exist, we end up adding him. Does that make sense? If Josh not in students, students Josh equals 71. Okay. What we can also do, oops, copy, paste, if we comment that out. We can also do students dot set underscore. No, no, it's not default. We do user 71 print students. And we get the same the same output. So what this is doing is it's saying this set default is those two lines of code, is the if statement, and then does it. So, does that make sense? So if it's not in there, set it to this. Now what do you think happens if it is in there? Let's see. Or it will replace the difference here. 
So we'll do Josh. We'll start with 70, see what happens. Wait, what just happened? changed it. Remember it changed it? Yeah, but it should have printed. Oh. There we go. Horses. It stays the same. So this is basically checking to see it does something already exist in there. If it doesn't make it this, if it does ignore this. Uh, black says when is not changed the light. Yeah. Any questions on that? So we got seven minutes. The last thing I want to do, because um, we'll get to pretty printing, which is basically instead of printing something like this, actually, this is super easy. Import pretty print. And since these are the same, we're going to do regular and then what is it? All right, well, I screwed something up on. It's at least in alphabetical order. That's one thing. What did I do wrong? You need the P format. Not according to the book. Oh. What? Pretty, you have access to pretty prints. Oh, this is stupid. What did I do? Did you import something? Yeah. yeah. Import preprint. See, this is what happens when I don't teach a class, except it's like once a year. Um, stuff changes, and I don't know, because I don't think I didn't think pretty print would change. Maybe if I do P format, let's see what that does. Um, oh wait, hang on. Do I? No. Nope. Count for count message. All right, whatever. I'm going to get back to the set default because I skipped over something on accident. Um, and I, this is a good uh, use of it. So Gettysburg address text. Four score and seven years ago. Copy. So wow. Okay, I'm leaving that as it is. And now what we can do we are going to count the letters of everything in here. That would suck if you had to do that by hand. I've actually done that to pass time before. When I haven't been allowed to have my phone or anything like that, I just, I just have some paper, I go through and I count. So count, we have a blank dictionary. We're gonna use the set default <clears throat> um, value. So we're gonna go for care, for ch in text, Count, yeah, count dot set default ch zero. What is that line doing? Mm -hmm. It's saying if it doesn't exist, make it zero. And then count ch plus equal one. I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. So what this is doing is that if it doesn't exist, set it to zero. If it does exist, it essentially ignores this line. And then we have plus equal one. So when we run this, 
we have a capital F once. O is 92 times. U is 21. R is 79. What about E? Four score. E is 165 times. Ooh. Space is 274. Yeah. So there's like 273 words or something like that. Capital G was one. 7275 words. If you have two words, there's one space. Yeah. Three what words or two. Did you print the count or what? Well, we're going to find out. So if we do pprint.pprint, now it works. What happens if we do it? Oh, yeah, dot. Thank you. You guys caught that one. Nice job. Hmm. Maybe just wasn't long enough for it to be... Maybe the output just wasn't long enough for work. So with this, maybe it just didn't go long enough for it to be counted as something that needed to be pretty printed. But that's what pretty print does. So now I can see, notice it is an alphabet, it's an ASCII, veto, ASCII, veto, ASCII order. ASCII vertical order. Back with new lines, spaces, punctuations first, and then we have B capital, all my capital letters and then all of the lowercase letters followed by dashes because I don't know where the dashes are. Does that make sense how pretty print works? Yeah. Okay. Go back. Say what? Go back, go back to the code? Yeah. Oh. So again, this code will be available online and I'm just going through the book. Um, we'll go over using dictionaries to simulate real world things like a chessboard or um, tic-tac-toe board and we'll go over next nested dictionaries and lists because I can have real quick I can have my character I still have a minute guys character is na name link and then I can have health these would normally be variables but health is you have three hearts and then inventory would then be another list with arrows and you have three of those a sword with one of those so that's it for the day I'll get that homework online um, you guys still have to do the try and accept this time you're going to do it with, with dictionaries, um, and I'll get that online for you, and it'll be due Monday. You just kind of add it on to the homework. At, what do you mean add it on? I didn't give you guys homework the other day. <laughs> That's because I got busy and, and stuff happened. Gotcha. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. See you guys. Thank you.